Welcome back to Robinson Foundry. The other day I was looking through some of my tools and I found this old sledgehammer head in the back of my toolbox. It got me thinking that it would be cool to make one out of solid copper. So it was off to Fusion 360 to design a pattern that I could use to make a sand mold. Casting a hammerhead with a hole going through the center requires the use of a core. This is a core mold that I made. The inner profile matches the profile of the hole in the hammer's head. To make the core, I mixed some sand and sodium silicate together and then packed it into the mold. The sodium silicate in the sand hardens in the presence of CO2, which locks the sand together. You might remember seeing me make this knife in a recent video. I've been using it around the shop as a light duty utility knife and it's actually still holding its original sharp edge. That's pretty amazing considering that it's a mixture of copper and aluminum. With the patterns and core ready to go, it was time to ram up a sand mold. This is a 12 pound copper ingot that I made last year. It's extremely useless like this and I was just tired of moving it around the shop so I decided to cut it up and use it for this project. Twelve pounds of copper is a lot to melt, especially when it's in large chunks like these, so this amount took about an hour to completely melt.
just before the pour, I added in a tiny amount of this copper phosphor into the metal. It makes the metal less viscous and helps to remove some of the gas that's absorbed into the metal as it's melting. I recently created a Patreon account, so if you would like to help me continue to make these videos, then Patreon is a great way to do that. In addition to helping out the channel, you'll gain access to 3D printing files and Patreon-only content. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who has already signed up, it really is a huge help. Usually, I only wait a few minutes to open a mold after a casting, but with such a large casting, it's better to wait as long as possible. Otherwise, it just ends up turning into a big fireball as soon as it's opened. Everything looked great with this casting until I flipped the hammer over and saw a large indentation caused by shrinkage. I tried to prevent this from happening by including large risers in the mold to feed the hammer as it solidified and shrank. But I think what happened is the hammer actually fed the risers instead. Oh well, I was planning on milling the faces anyways, so I just decided to remove a little more material. As I was machining the faces, I revealed a large, ugly void on one side. I tried filling it with silver solder, which really didn't look very good. I was thinking of ways to improve on this until I realized I have a milling machine and a lathe. First I machined a hole slightly wider than the diameter of the void. Then using some copper round bar that I cast, I turned a plug that fit perfectly in the hole. I used a ball peen hammer to smash and expand the plug, and then I machined off the excess. This worked really well, and the repair is almost invisible, so I'm glad I went through the trouble. I found this hickory axe handle for sale locally and I figured it would be perfect for this. I cut it to length and then started the meticulous and tedious process of fitting it onto the hammer head.
Once I got the handle fitting properly, I used some abrasives on the copper to clean it up before permanently attaching it to the handle. The handle came with some steel wedges, but I decided to make one out of aluminum bronze instead. I asked my subscribers if I should leave the brushed finish or polish the metal to a mirror finish. Most of you seem to think that if the hammer was going to be used, I should leave it the way it is, and if it was going to be a wall hanger, then I should polish it. Well, I won't kid myself, I really don't think I'll be using this hammer for anything, so a mirror finish it is. Well I have to say this thing turned out really really cool, it was definitely a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be, but that's how most projects turn out. This was my first experience making a hammer of any kind, and I thought it was a fun project. I'm definitely looking forward to making other things like hatchets and smaller hammers to use around the shop. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this, and if you did, please let me know what you think in the comments, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe for future videos. As usual, I'll have affiliate links in the description for things I've used in this video as well as things I would recommend. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.